almost ready here. Uh, okay. Come on. I I've just turned my mic on, so perhaps you can hear me. I'm I'm I've asked my computer to do too much right now, and so the web browser that I need to do certain things with still is behaving rather poorly at the moment, but I'm, I'm almost ready. I'm almost there. <laughs> it's just, it just froze up, um, but I'll be there in a second. Um, about the delay but hello everyone um, I am professor Zach Whalen I'm back here today for DGST 395 oh and it didn't make a link oh man this is the link I was trying to get done um, so I could share it with you just notice my off audio is off a little bit but that should be okay I hope um, don't just maybe don't pay too much attention to my face and just listen to my words um, so let me make this a link there it is now it's a link um, there is a link here in an announcement that I just shared in Canvas earlier. Uh, you can look at it now if you'd like, but don't rush to do that. I have some more things to explain first and talk you through, and then we're going to get to it. Uh, this is a Colab notebook, and I want to spend uh, some time today talking about Colab notebooks, introducing you to one, and then walking you through how to use it. Uh, it should be a fairly gentle introduction, and um, yeah, it, I. I had said that I would try to get the entire first node done today, but I felt like that was too much. I mean, it literally was too much for me to try to do, but also um, I think this gentler introduction introduction will work uh, better for you anyway. So we will get started with that uh, shortly, but I um, hope you're all, you all are doing well. Uh, good to see you all, or good for you to see me, I guess. It's, it's so awkward with this whole system, but um, glad to see you all were enjoying the lo-fi beats. There's a... Um, I got this from, I just, I literally just Googled like royalty free lo-fi and uh, this the website fezlianstudios.com has a bunch of free stuff and I just, I don't remember which one, I just picked it, I downloaded a couple and, and then I set them up to play there and um, so far anyway I haven't gotten any copyright strikes for it so I think that's good, you know, it seems to be uh, relatively free. I'll probably change up that uh, intro music every now and then of that, that video. Uh, the video I just got from archive.org, it has a bunch of really random public domain stuff and this is somebody's video of their road trip uh, like to Las Vegas uh, in the 1950s and it's just just silent film of this footage but I, there's definitely a mood to it. I really, I don't know, it, it really kind of sucks you in and you can kind of imagine what it's like to be on the road. There's like pretty well shot films so Anyway, I, I don't know what I don't know who made it, um, but I like it. So <laughs> hope you enjoy it too, or at least uh, you're okay with it. Uh, hope you can hear me okay. I think my audio looks like it's good, and my bitstream looks all right. But if you have any issues or um, things aren't coming through clearly, please let me know so I can make an adjustment if necessary. Uh, thank you for uh, submitting the survey. Most of you have done that. There were only like two or three left last time I checked, which was a couple hours ago. So thanks for doing that, all of you that did. It was pretty interesting looking at the responses uh, in there. So um, I had a couple of, of general things to say in response to some of your comments there. And then I wanna talk about some organizational things. Um, you know, one of the questions on the survey was something like, how, um, how are you doing? And then are you concerned about anything this fall or what, do, what are your concerns? And interestingly, the two concerns that emerged, I mean, many of you just said, no, I'm fine, everything's fine. Um, but the two themes that I noticed in terms of things that you are concerned about, um, some of you are concerned about the COVID-19 situation. Of course, you know, I am too. 
uh, some of you are concerned about that with uh, specifically with the idea of returning to the campus. Uh, so again, yeah, I understand that and I, I share some of those concerns and um, yeah, I, I do plan to return to campus uh, whenever it opens, if it does, but uh, I understand if you would rather not. Totally fine and you'll be fine with as far as the work for this class goes. Um, I mean, I, but I think we all are generally anxious about this uh, global pandemic that we, we, we're living with right now. Uh, so that's definitely understandable. The other thing that many of you were concerned about or some of you expressed some um, anxiety about, I think, was uh, the idea of an online class or an, uh, this hybrid online class. And uh, I think you're concerned about um, what to do when and where to be and, and stuff like that. Uh, so I'm going to, I mean, yeah, I, I understand that as well, especially because you're probably getting different versions and different combinations of those things from different classes. So I'm, I'm sure it's a lot to navigate. So I'm going to do my best to get everything out to you as much as possible, as clearly as possible. Um, Canvas is the common denominator. So if it's not in Canvas, it's not important or vice versa. If it is important, it will be in Canvas. There will be other platforms like Discord and Twitch. And then I'm going to introduce you to Colab today. Um, that's pretty much it as far as platforms. Uh, so there will be content information there, but if it's important, it will also be in Canvas. It will primarily be in Canvas. That's gonna be the main way that I communicate with you with the announcements in Canvas and also where you submit assignments. Uh, that's where you find links to things like the Collab Notebooks. You know, so that, that's, where, that's where you should go if you have a question. Also, of course, if you have a question, seriously, just email me anytime. Discord, whatever. Uh, I'm always happy to answer questions and, uh, you know, sometimes students are like, I'm sorry to ask you this, but I mean, don't apologize. Just ask. I mean, if you have a question, you need to know the answer. I will try to answer it if I can. Like, that's my job. So don't worry about that. Um, yeah. So definitely always, 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 always email me or, or Discord. You can private message me in Discord or just generally, you know, message me in Discord, whatever you need to do. Um, so I'm going to be, obviously, I'm talking right now today, Twitch streaming. I will also be streaming again on Friday because some of the stuff I had hoped to do today, I don't think I'm going to have time for. So uh, that's the plan generally. Uh, I will be back streaming Friday. And also by Friday, I will have your cohorts organized. In fact, I have, I almost have it right now, um, but I just, you know, I want to wait for the last two or three and then also kind of do the math on a couple of things. Let's see. Okay, so a decent number of you are planning, it uh, looks like planning to be online only. So, um, but that, that number seems uh, pretty similar to the number that's gonna be in each respective face-to-face uh, -face session. So I think, I think the cohorts will line up more or less as I expected. The one thing I was a little, you know, bummed to, <laughs> to discover, but of course it's fine, is that many of you do have a conflict, so you won't be able to attend like the other sections live stream. So, uh, I'm not going to be able to just do the single stream instead of two. I'm going to have to do two streams if I you know, do it this way. I, I might think of something else, some other way to save myself some time and effort, but uh, you know, for now I'll just plan on doing two and that's okay. Uh, uh, this is the 140 section one stream and then I'll do another one at 250 and you know, that'll be, that'll be it. That'll be fine. Um, so yeah, uh, that's okay. Um, let's see, what else? Yeah, the other... I guess the other thing is just make sure, let me just, I, I turned off the music, right? Okay, good. Oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> now the music is off. I have different scenes set up. Was that weird having me with me? Ah. <laughs> so many scenes here in OBS. Um, was that cool with me talking with the background music? I bet that, that sounded pretty cool. Um, or maybe it was distracting, I don't know. Sorry about that, but it's, it should be off now. Again, if things sound weird, uh, let me know. There was no background. Oh, okay, so may maybe, the, I guess it stops. Right, okay, so when I switched the timer, what, what you saw me is switching to the timer, that was me switching to the scene. And I guess that makes sense because the, uh, the music is only loaded as, an, an, as a source on that um, countdown scene that I have set up in OBS, so that's, that's good. All right, thanks. It's, it's strange to me because actually the way I've set this up, I can't actually hear that music. Uh, so I don't know, um, I don't know what you're hearing. Uh, there's no way for me to, no easy way for me to have an audio monitor on it. So, you know, oh well. All right, so hope you all are doing well and getting adjusted and settled into your various classes. Um, you know, there's a lot I'm sure that you're, you're hearing about and trying to figure out. 
I uh, hope that's going well. You know, uh, all of us faculty, um, we've been working on hard on figuring out how to adapt things and adjust things. And uh, I know, like all, everyone I know, every faculty member I know has been working really hard this summer. Um, there was an online, like a, a workshop thing that, that we'd spent uh, several weeks on over the summer about how to teach online. Um, so, you know, we're, we're doing our best, but I'm sure it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be an uneven experience. It's going to be a weird experience for certain things. Um, uh, but you know, we're doing our best and we appreciate your patience and, uh, you know, we'll be patient with you too, as we're figuring these things out. Um, yeah. So today I would like to, in fact, I'm just going to go straight into this now, uh, say a bit about, yeah, let me just, let's just get into it. So this is, um, the plan for today. Uh, one of the big things, one of the really f frequent things that we're going to be doing, that you're going to be using in this class is something called a CoLab Notebook. And I thought I would spend the next few minutes introducing you to CoLab Notebooks and walking you through uh, how to use one and how to get started using one. This is going to be a place for us to, um, well, for you to write some code, for me to write some code and some content for you, and then for you to write some code and work with uh, some ideas there. And if you've never used it before, it does take a little bit of explanation. And so I'm going to spend that time uh, today. I'm going to spend some time today explaining that, uh, walking you through that. Um, and I do intend this as a walkthrough, which means I would recommend, if you're watching this in real time, certainly, is um, uh, clicking this link. So I sent an announcement in Canvas, and then I just now, just before I started streaming, I shared this uh, link to the notebook that I, I threw together this afternoon of uh, just a quick demonstration of some things in CoLab Notebook. So I recommend going ahead now and clicking that link, making a copy of that notebook, and then following along with me as I demonstrate some things. Um, so if you want to do two wind two like two side by side windows, you might want to if, if you can do that, you might want to do that, or you could like minimize me and just listen to me explain it. Um, or you could just watch me do this and then try it later on your own. So decide whatever modality is going to work for you, and um, and then I'm going to get started. I'm just going to go through uh, this notebook. So uh, let's see. There's a question. Uh, so this is. I just saw a question from Grace in Discord. I can share it in Discord as well, but it's uh, well. Actually, if I switch over here, but it's in. If you go to the the announcement in Canvas. Um, there's a reply to that announcement with the link, but I can also try to share it here. <laughs> Just gotta make sure I'm in the right Discord. I have quite a few Discords. <laughs> uh, here it is. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Typos are fine. Um, <laughs> I, I just want to say it's, it's really good to see you all on here, like the people that I, I know and I remember, you know, having class with uh, back in the spring. It's, it's good to see you all. Um, okay, so let's take a look at it. This is the notebook, and I've already got this here. So um, let me say a little bit about what this is. Feel free to start playing around with your copy once you make your copy. Um, but this is this is it. So to make a copy, uh, that is the first thing I guess I should show you. Um, it is. Uh, this is built inside of Google Drive, so you do need to have a Google account and a uh, you need to be logged into it. So it's just like you would do uh, for Google Docs or Google Sheets or something like that. Um, so that is required. You can't do this without a Google account. Um, I, I think you probably already have one. Most people do. Uh, if not, you will need to create one. If you have um, a moral objection to using Google, some people have declared themselves uh, that they will not uh, use a Google service. Um, I have an alternative for you, so um, you know, let me know. I can show you other ways to do that. Uh, just in general, this idea of a notebook, uh, a Python notebook, is a generic software concept that can be used and implemented in different ways. So this CoLab Notebooks is just one implementation of this and one style of notebook, um, but they are relatively common. It's a pretty common way of doing R, which is a different programming language. Uh, I This is also a, a way that I've, I've done Python programming using a system called Jupyter Notebooks. There's also something called Azure Notebooks, which is hooked into the Microsoft ecosystem. So th th there are lots of ways you can do a notebook. Um, but I like the CoLab Notebook version because it's really convenient the way that it's organized and accessible through Google Drive. Uh, the same sharing system that you could use for Google Docs works here for the, the CoLab Notebooks. 
uh, but also they let you hook into fairly powerful computers on the back end. And I'll show you what that means whenever we get down to the code part. But if you're trying to do machine learning or any kind of artificial intelligence stuff, Colab notebooks are pretty good and they're free. Uh, so like you can actually use some pretty powerful computers to run your training model or whatever you're doing if you, if you, if you ever do something complicated like that. And uh, that's, that's nice. Other systems, Azure notebooks are, are also pretty good. I think you can hook the Azure system into, um, I forget what Microsoft's, I'm liking what Microsoft's artificial intelligence platform is called. It might be, it might be Azure too. But anyway, you can, you can do some things with Microsoft as well. But again, Google, the, the convenience of the Google thing is what's, uh, what I find pretty compelling. So this is a notebook. It, some of the stuff does look slightly different from a, a Google Doc, but a lot of the terminology is the same. So you go to file and uh, save a copy in Drive. That's how you should get started. And I'll leave that up there for a second. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know where my head is because I know my head is on the left on this uh, scene here. But you want to save a copy in Drive and then that will open up your copy and it'll also be saved in your Drive. We are going to be doing several of these, so you might want to go ahead and think about how to organize that in your drive. Um, I've got these all in a single drive folder for me, uh, but you can decide you know, what the easiest way to do it is for you. Uh, when you do that, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and make a copy myself so I don't change the original, is you go to, yeah, it, uh, so open copy complete, open a new tab. So when you make a copy, you'll see that it's called copy of intro to notebooks.ipynb. Uh, I would recommend, just to keep things straight as you're watching this and also to help me in case you share yours with me later on, uh, go ahead and rename it with your actual name. So I'm gonna say Zach's copy of intro to notebooks.ipynb. Uh, that way, you know, it's easy for me to see that this is my copy. This is not just a copy, this is my copy. And later on, if you share it with me, um, it, yours would be Brian's copy of Intro to Notebooks. And so I would say, oh, yeah, that's, that's Brian's. And so it helped me, uh, in case I get 50 notebooks shared with me, I should be able to see whose is who uh, pretty quickly if you name them that way. But as long as you can see, you know, which one you're working on, that would be great. Also, just kind of keeping it, if you have like my notebook in another tab, it might be easier to see which is which if you name yours after yourself. So you can keep track of that. Okay, um, so I'm gonna be just kind of moving through this, but uh, like, you know, what I would do in a uh, face-to-face -face class with something like this is I would demonstrate this kind of step and then I would kind of check and see, did everybody do that? Like, did that make sense? And um, it's a little different now, but if you do need me to say something again or show you something again, I can, I can do that, right? So just uh, uh, shout out on Discord and I will probably see it. Um, if I don't see it immediately, I should see it you know, eventually and I can show it to you again. Um, in general though, I'm gonna try to keep moving so that I can get through some things here because you can always watch it again later. And like, if you need to see something again, you could actually just go back to that you know, timestamp in the archived uh, stream. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going back and forth, but if, if you do need me to show you something again, I can, that really quickly, I can probably do that. So this is it, right? So uh, Colab Notebooks, um, these are, I, I use the term Colab Notebook interchangeably with Python Notebook and Colab Notebook. Uh, Python Notebook is the more generic name. Colab Notebook is um, is the this specific one. And yes, Twitch streams are saved. They are on Twitch. So if you go to twitch.tv slash Zach Whalen, so my, that's my Twitch channel, you'll see uh, the most recent streams archived there. But those archives disappear after a couple of weeks. So you should actually go to, I'll show you, uh, youtube.com slash Zach Whalen, where you can find on my channel at the bottom, once it loads, you'll be able to see um, applied digital studies uh, archives down here. So live stream archives are at the bottom on my channel page, and you can uh, do it that way. And yeah, you can, if you follow me on Twitch, you'll see me uh, whenever I go live. So as you can see, I'm actually going to be posting each individual stream for each class. So you'll see your section stream and the other ones. Um, so hopefully you can find everything you need to. Okay, so making a copy of the drive is uh, in your drive is the first thing. So what's happening whenever you run this is this is running in a web browser, right? This is uh, Firefox in my case, but Probably works fine in other browsers as well. Um, Microsoft is always the question, uh, and Safari is also sometimes the question. Uh, so I'm trying to remember if I've had issues with this before using Microsoft. 
uh, like the Internet Explorer or Edge or whatever they call it now. I I'm well, well, let me know. I mean, if some of you are using that, then uh, let me know if you have issues. But I always use Firefox, uh, sometimes Chrome. Um, but between those two, they're pretty good. So um, I usually just recommend if you're using something else and it's not working, I usually recommend just switching to Firefox or Chrome and usually that clears the issue up. So yeah, hopefully we'll, we'll be okay. I'm gonna go ahead with Firefox here. But what, what's happening whenever I am running this notebook is it's actually connecting or it's about to uh, connect to a computer on Google's servers somewhere. Like it's gonna connect to a virtual computer somewhere owned by Google and let me run code on that computer. Let me execute code on that computer. Um, whenever you're, you know, this is also kind of an introduction to Python. Um, whenever you write Python, Python is a scripting language, and if you think of like uh, like a movie script, that's instructions for the actors to say certain things and for the, the cinematographer to shoot certain things. In computer contexts, a script, like when you write it in Python, it's a set of instructions for the computer to carry it out. And when you write those instructions, you say, do this, then do this, then do this, then say this. Uh, that's much like a movie script where you're saying, these are the things I want you to do. Um, what's great about the Colab Notebook environment is that um, I'm not talking to my computer in that case. I'm going to be talking to Google's computer, which is helpful because Google's computer is much more powerful than mine. And also it's uh, much more consistent if we're all talking to Google's computers instead of our own. So we don't have to think about our individual environments quite as much. So it saves a lot of time. It helps in a lot of ways. Um, but let's get into let's just I was getting ahead of myself a little bit. Let's talk a bit about kind of how to make content. So as you can see here, I've got some text that I've already written, and I will show you that shortly. Actually, no, so I'll do this first. So uh, as you can see, my instructions here is to write file, save a copy, and drive. And you can edit content here. There are two, there are two kinds of content in a notebook. You've got code and you've got text. So what you see here, these are all text cells. And you can create text cells. This is a little awkward, actually, you, but it, it works. Um, if you hover near the edge of, like the middle edge, top or bottom of a cell, you get these two buttons that pop out. You can go plus code and uh, plus text, and that's going to insert whichever cell in that place. So if I click right here, actually, I, I would recommend you do this down here. I've actually prompted you to do this down here. If you click plus text, you can see that it's gonna create uh, a cell and it's gonna get me um, a cursor and I can start typing. I can start typing here. Let's see, is, that, am I, is my head covering that up? It is kind of. Ah. Here, let me move myself. Let me move myself over a little bit. <laughs> there we go. So this is, uh, this is where I was just starting to type. I can start typing here. So try this out, try to start typing. Um, it is literally just text. Uh, this is uh, a very simplified kind of text formatting. It uses something called Markdown, and it's very um, minimalist, really. You can't pick a font, uh, for example. You can't do like crazy layouts, but uh, you can't change the color. Um, but you can write text, and it's going to give you a preview on the right of what it's going to look like. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, um, these little, these buttons on the editor, let me, let me see, I'll make these bigger. Uh, these buttons here let you do different markdown things. And if you click one of the buttons, let's say I can make my text italic. If you select some text like the word italic here and then you click the I, it's gonna make that italic by inserting the correct markdown syntax, which in this case just puts a star before and after it. Um, I don't know. You can also just type it. So I could just type two asterisks there. Markdown also works in Discord, by the way. So if you want to make your messages in Discord, have a little bit more, you know, customization or, or specific way of looking, then you are uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, but try different things and see what happens. What happens if I add? Two asterisks. Asterisks. <laughs> yeah, it makes it uh, have a bold typeface. So, um, yeah, you know, pretty uh, pretty quick once you get used to it. A little awkward until you do. Um, I did what just happened there. That often happens to me where I, I will accidentally click on one of these buttons when I don't mean to. Um, but once you learn it, it's very fast, and that's why Markdown is really convenient. It's HTML. You're actually writing HTML here, but 
Um, it's like a, a shorthand um, kind of, uh, yeah, a shorthand version of, of HTML. So you, I think you can actually type out full um, HTML like uh, if you want to, but you can see it's a lot more typing. So it, you know, it works, but you know, you don't need to do it that way. Um, all right, so this is basically you're writing, you're making a little web page here, and you can make lots of these little web pages down your document to try to um, explain whatever you're trying to explain, or uh, in your case, you're going to be reading most of the time at first, so you can read the things that I write and, and work your way through it. So um, that's how you add and, and how you manipulate things in a uh, text cell. Now, one thing you can do, you can also link to things, and it is possible to embed videos it's just a little awkward. There's an extra workaround you have to do, um, but you can also just link. I recommend just linking to videos. So if you click that link, you'll see that I invited a motivational speaker to class today um, to kind of inspire us as we're getting started uh, with things this semester. So check that out. Um, but that's, uh, but yeah, that's a link. Uh, there is a way to embed it again, but it's not usually necessary. Uh, I might do it when in the um, notebooks that I share with you, but if in your case, you know. You usually, you usually won't have to. Now, embedding images is, they've changed something about embedding images here. And I discovered that just before I went live and I did something that caused my browser to freeze up. And so I'm not going to do it now. Um, but what I've discovered is if you click the image icon, it actually pops up a little thing that lets you upload a file. And that's reasonable, it, it makes sense. However, what they do with that file does not make sense to me anyway. What they do is it, um, and I don't even know if this, I, this may not make sense. I, I may, I'm not gonna be able to show it to you because it'll crash the browser, but what it does is it, it converts that uh, image into base64 data and then inserts that as text into the cell here. So it actually, it works fine, but it totally breaks the syntax highlighting and it crashes the browser because of how much it is. If you use like a decent sized JPEG, which is what I did which I did, I did just because I didn't know any better. I think it would work fine for very small images, but for like photograph type images, no way. Just, yeah, don't do that. Um, so the other thing you can do to embed images is you can host an image somewhere else and then include it in here. Uh, I think anyway, you can still do this unless they've changed it. So let me just try this image um, and see if this, see if this works. Uh, what is, let's see, what is the highlight? Now I have to remember what the actual, syntaxes, markdown syntaxes for an image. I think this is right, let's see. Yeah, there it is, great. So there is, you know, it's kind of awkward, you sort of have to remember it, but it is definitely possible to um, uh, embed an image. Okay, so, I don't know. Like I said, I'm just trying to introduce you to Colab Notebooks. So I'm trying to show you different things you can do. And this is these are some of the things you can do in a Colab Notebook. Uh, when we get to Node 1, which I'll introduce on Friday now, Node 1 will be a Python notebook like this with content already in it and prompts at different points in that document for you to add different things to it. And so that's why I'm showing you this method for um, adding content and writing content. So what I would like for you to do is with this intro one, you know, follow along. Hopefully you've already done this as I've done it and try to insert some text, try the different formatting things and see what they look like and see what they do and start getting the hang of uh, writing in Markdown inside of a Colab notebook. Okay, so how's everyone doing? Anyone have any questions? If everyone's doing okay or if you are, if you are doing okay, then, um, you know, Give me a thumbs up or let me know in the in the live stream chat because uh, if not then i want to make sure i can help people but um yeah, so far this was pretty okay um so so okay because someone asked a question can you use html to insert images and yeah as far as i know uh you could write your own let's try it you, you could probably write your own uh, image insert anyway let's see yeah so that works if you do an image tag um, I did find you cannot do a, um, uh, an iframe. So like if you wanted to, if you know what that is, uh, if you wanted to do an iframe to insert, uh, to embed a, um, a YouTube video, that does not work. Uh, so I don't know, There's, there is a way to do it. Um, 
you have to add an extra thing to your notebook and I just, I don't wanna, it's not important enough to do right now, but I will do it eventually if you really are interested in that. Okay, so a few other things. Now, um, over here on the left, I haven't talked about the left part of it yet. You've got a lot of different tools, by the way, up here, and you can play with those as you need to. Uh, but over here on the left, there are some important things that are worth uh, showing you. So if you click on this first icon at the top left, it looks like a list of bullets here. You can see that the document is organized and it's a table of contents. So you can click on any of these titles and jump to that section. All right, so these are different sections that I've written. Uh, these are showing up as headings in my table of contents because I wrote them as headings in my document. So I'm going to double click this first one so you can see what I wrote to make that a heading. In Markdown, a single hash mark like that means this is a, uh, up, uh, a high level comment, or a, sorry, not comment, a high level heading. Like this is the highest possible, letting, uh, highest possible level of heading. So you wanna use this as your title most of the time if you're writing these from scratch. Uh, similarly, the editing text here, this is a second order heading, right? So this is gonna be not like the second in order, but the second in importance. And so this is um, a chapter title, essentially the way I've done it. So that is at a higher level than the try it yourself heading here, which is a, uh, I believe a level three, uh, where'd it go? There it is, yeah, so this is a heading level three. And that's what gives you that Outline structure here on the left where you can see that it's Welcome to the Colab Notebooks is a uh, H1, a heading, a heading one or, or a top level heading. And then editing text is an H2 or second level heading. And try it yourself is a level three. Linking and embedding, that's also a level two. And then writing code is also a level two. So this organization, I think I could probably organize a little better than that, but that's, uh, I wanted to show you mainly how I achieve that, which is using the hash marks, right? So this is a writing code, and that's a two second order heading, so writing code, right? Okay, we're almost ready to actually run some code, um, and I've got a very conventional uh, starting point for writing code down here, and then let's see, how much time? Yeah, I should be wrapping it up relatively soonly. Soonly, <laughs> soonly I will be quickly wrapping it up so I combined quickly and soon, and so uh, I will be wrapping it up in a few minutes. So I want to make sure to show you how to work with code here, and then um, go from there. That's what it, there's like a little spider on my glasses. Ah, you can't see it, but I kept seeing something out of the in the corner of my field of vision. It was this little spider. So there you go, little guy. Um, I am semi outdoors in the sunroom, so. There is a very large, I mean, they're not large, but there are lots of spider webs out here and it's no big deal, but it, it's a little surprising sometimes when they show up over here. Uh, okay, so let's talk about code. So now that we are, I've shown you basically how you can write, write content and this would be something you want someone to read or watch maybe. Um, let's get to the actual heart of, and really the point of using a Colab notebook. Cause of course there's all kinds of ways you can put content on a website, right? WordPress, you know, uh, raw HTML, all kinds of things. Uh, the real the cool thing that Colab can do is uh, give you a place to execute code. So this is code. Uh, this is a print statement using Python. And I can run this here. I've already run it. You can see the output here. But let me just make a new one just to show you how to do this. So you can hit plus code. And when you have a, a, a code cell, you can see it has my, a minus setup. So I have line numbers displayed here on the left. Um, you have to turn that on. Um, I'll show you how to do that in a second. But um, I find that convenient and you type some code here. Now, so, so Python is the language we're using and we will talk a little bit about, I mean, we'll get into that. I'll explain how Python works and other things, but for now, I'll just kind of copy what I do. Um, yeah, um, Python is very useful. It's wide, widely used. Um, I think I'm just gonna do the same thing again. Uh, I'm gonna write hello again and notice a couple things about syntax. I wrote the word print and then immediately after that, I wrote the type the opening uh, parentheses and then close it over here. And then in between, I wrote a message in quote marks that I wanted to print. And so in order for me to uh, tell Python to execute this code, I need to hit the play button here, or you can also hit control enter. And I'm just gonna hit, I'm just gonna click the play button so you can see what happens the first time you run code. And it runs and then it printed. So there it is, I wrote, I wrote code. So if you do something similar, then, uh, then you have, written some code and you are a programmer. Uh, now I'll, I'll show you what might go wrong uh, in that. So let's say I missed a quote mark, right? Pretty common thing to do. Uh, and I got an error and you can see that this error here is telling me 
EOL while scanning string literal. Um, it's kind of a technical way of saying it, but the great thing about Python is that it has really verbose error messages. So whenever you have a Python compiling error, it almost always tells you what you did wrong and what to do about it uh, with a little practice. Like some of these does take a little bit of interpretation, but a lot of times, you know, it, it's not too bad. And actually this points me pretty close to the actual problem. Um, what it's saying is EOL, it means end of line. Um, Python is saying, I was trying to understand this, but I got all the way to the end of the line and I still didn't understand it. So you need to fix something here. And it's right, I need to fix something at the end of my line, which is I need to say that actually that's where my literal ends. Uh, and this is now you know, correct syntactically. So you will find as you write Python, even minimally, I mean, you, you get errors and that's, that's fine. That's very normal. Um, but again, an error isn't a bad thing and often it's very helpful, especially in Python. Um, I don't know if you saw, but as I connected this notebook up here on the right where it says RAM and disk, that, used, that it initially just said connect because uh, I wasn't connected. But now that I've run some code, I am connected to a computer and I can learn about that computer here a little bit. I mean, I don't need, I don't need to know much about it, but I need to know that I can see here that I have just barely started to use the RAM on it and um, it's, uh, it's got yeah, 12 gigabytes of RAM and 100 gigabytes of memory, which should be plenty for anything that, that we're doing in this class, really way more than we, just about anything we're doing. Um, but there are certain things you can do that might end up uh, running into the limitations of that. And if that's the case, you can go to this runtime thing and you can actually change the runtime type to be more powerful. If you switch to a GPU or a TPU, uh, you can get much more powerful computing if you wanna do something with machine learning. Uh, but we don't need to do that. Um, yeah, uh, so I guess the last thing I wanted to show you with your uh, Colab notebook uh, like interface thing is sometimes people find it fun to play around with the settings on these. So if you click the gear icon, you can learn a bit about some things here. Oh, they've changed the way this looks. Okay, but that's all right. Um, let me... Oh no, I just I was too I was zoomed in too far. Okay, so I like you can set it to have a light or a dark theme. I like a light theme. Uh, just it's kind of what I'm used to, but some people like a dark theme. That's fine. Uh, it, you know, I'll just show you what that looks like in case you're curious. Um, you know, it's it's the same content. It just kind of looks you know it's themed for a dark uh, screen, which some people like, and that's fine. I actually have been using the darker screen. Uh, on my operating system, but uh, for some reason I'm still used to reading code with a light theme on, um, on Collab Notebooks for some reason. Uh, I just can't get used to switching it. Uh, so the other things you can do that are, that are, come on, there it is, um, that are useful. So if you go to editor here, uh, I do like to show line numbers because that helps me navigate if I have a chunk of code and there's only one part of it that I think is the problem. It's easier for me to find that chunk and talk about it if I if I am displaying the line numbers. So um, that's where that, if you look back here, I have one only one line in this cell, so it has a one next to it, but if I hit enter more times, I get, I get multiple numbers. If yours doesn't have that, that's how you can get those numbers. If you click the gear icon, go to editor and um, show line numbers. The other thing people like to have fun with here is there is a uh, power level and then there's also Corgi mode and Kitty mode. Uh, I don't usually leave these on because they take up browser memory, but I'll just show you what it looks like. Uh, I'll show, let's just, I'll go to mini power and show you what this looks like. Um, so it's like, it like explodes as you're typing. Oh, this is power. Um, you know, it doesn't do anything different in terms of Python. It just kind of looks cool. So <laughs> that's, it feels kind of dumb to me, but some people like it. Uh, that's fine if you do. The other thing that people like, I'm gonna turn off power mode, um, is Corgi mode and Kitty mode. You can turn on one or, or the other or both. And uh, after I've, now that I've got those enabled, you'll see what that does in a second. Um, that's all it does. It just makes little cartoon corgis and kitties walk by. Sometimes there's a crowd of them. Sometimes it's one at a time. It changes nothing about the environment or about like the code that gets executed. It just, you know, it's just something there to be slightly amusing. It is kind of fun too during like um, 
like around Christmas time, occasionally they'll have Santa hats on, you know, things like that. They do holiday themed costumes sometimes, but I don't know. It also just, it uses computing power. So uh, you may find that it's actually not worth, not worth letting your computer spend its energy on that. Um, so, all right, well, I'm gonna wrap it up here uh, pretty quickly. So if you have any questions, last minute questions, oh, look at all the thumbs ups thumbs up <laughs> that's great uh the uh maybe if i had posted a message you all could have just reacted to that and that would have worked just as well uh but i'm going to wrap it up here um lest you think this class is all about programming let me assure you that i it is not uh it's just that this particular platform is what we are going to use as a common reference point for content uh so don't worry if you found this introduction a little bit bewildering it's not what we're gonna spend all of our time on in this class by any means. I just wanted to, it is kind of different, and so I wanted to spend a lot of time today walking you through it. Um, so, you know, but really, it's not It's not too bad, I, I don't think. I think it's pretty okay. The, the real content of the class is the ideas that I will be using Python notebooks to convey to you and then that you'll be developing on your own. Um, but we need to get a basic understanding of these before we go much further. So that's why I wanted to spend some time on it today. All right, so hopefully that went okay for you all. Let's see, how long have I been going? Yeah, I've been going about 50 minutes. I got started late, but um, yeah, I'm getting near the end here. So I will just leave it open here for a, a couple more minutes maybe in case you have any questions or concerns or issues or if you want me to look at any other part of this again. Uh, again obviously, I did not really get into Python at all, and that's, that's by design, but you, you can do a lot with this in, in this environment. Uh, something that's convenient, for example, if Python is... Like, even if you don't know Python syntax, Python can understand mathematical expressions. So if you need to do some complex math, like it's not unreasonable to type, well, if I can type, it's not unreasonable to type math in here and, you know, just hit shift enter and it'll just print back the answer, right? That's Python. Python did the math there for me. I could have done that one in my head. I just typed numbers and those were the first two that I typed. Anyway, yeah. All right, so as far as homework or anything, there's no uh, homework other than uh, try you know, play around with your copy of your notebook. If you followed along as I did it, you're fine. Um, but maybe come back to it and you know, check it out. Uh, if you just watched what I did and you wanna try it on your own, that's fine too. But if you get stuck or have a question, uh, let me know. Uh, the two things that I would, I would recommend that you know and make sure you know from this demo is uh, how to uh, stylize your text and organize it using headings, and then also how to how to write code. And you really don't have to have any code knowledge, but just understanding that this is code and it it executes as opposed to text which you just read. That's the big, I guess, learning goal or takeaway for today. Okay, so I will wrap it up then. I think I think we're good. Um, I will be back on Friday at 1.40 and 2.50 again, and I will be introducing you to uh, into the first node, which is going to have to do with algorithms. And we're gonna learn about what algorithms are and how they are used to shape our society and our culture and our lives. So, should be fun, or at least interesting. Uh, all right, well, thanks for watching. I'm gonna wrap it up here. Have a good afternoon.